Hello, everyone. This is Jim Samard with Care Printing and Publishing. I've been authorized by ClearProp TV's Paramotor podcast to edit this week's show and rebroadcast it for you. In this edit, I endeavor to focus on the guest, their story, and what they have to say. If you find this show even a little bit informative, please give it a thumbs up and that will benefit others. It'll allow them to find the video easier and learn as well. So if you have any questions, put them down below in the comment section and I'll answer them. Also, if you enjoy the show and you wanna see more, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when more videos come up. Have a great day, enjoy the show. Welcome to season three, episode 126 of PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast, clearprop.tv.com and paratalk.org. We got an amazing podcast for you today. Uh, we have Jeremy in the house. We're going to introduce him in just a moment. But before we do that, we're going to say hello to everybody on the panel. That way you guys know what's going on and who we are. So real quick, we're going to say hello to our Paramom USA from ParamomUSA.com, our very own Linda Anderson. What's up, girl? <laughs> I know I'm having a hard time sitting still tonight because I am super stoked about this show. This is going to be an awesome Mondays show. Mondays are rocking. Okay, they are. Thing. They this are. This is a place to be right here on Monday night. And we Absolutely. We have an awesome guest, Jeremy, who's in the house tonight. Thank you, Jeremy. And I'm gonna. I'm just gonna be real short. Thank you, all my chatters and my viewers for being here tonight. I so appreciate every one of you. So enjoy Monday night. Absolutely. So if you guys want to be on our show, just get up with Linda Anderson. Just go to paramomusa.com. That forwards over to her Facebook page. Just PM her and say, yo, I want to be on PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast, and she will hook you up. So thank you, Linda, for being on the show and being on our panel. We also got Jim from Canada. A, tell us about your flights and how your maple syrup money smells so good. Hmm, it's wonderful when you have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess it's uh, the money is kind of shorthanded right now. So <laughs> I guess you're just gonna have to to take your money and dip it in maple syrup and go. Mm. So what are, your, <laughs> what are your what are your flights? Bill and dip it. <laughs> yeah, what are your flights up to now, Jim? I'm at 136 flights. That is awesome, that bud. Flight. Cannot believe it, man. Before you know it, you're going to be up to 200. Ooh, wouldn't that be nice? That will be. So you need to hurry up. Anyways, Jim takes care of us. He does all of our printing. He does our printing for stickers and decals. Everybody knows what a decal is, right? Jim, what is a decal? A decal. A decal, right. <laughs> um, he also. We're also starting a new paramotorcalendar.com. So if you want to upload your favorite paramotor pictures... Uh, go to ppgzone.com and upload them. We're going to have a new paramotorcalendar.com coming out soon. And that's from Jim's company. Jim, uh, tell us real quick about your company and how we can get up with you, bud. Care Printing and Publishing. You can get a hold of me through carepp.com or you can give me a call, 1-800-946-4027, uh, extension 2, and I'll get you taken care of. Awesome. And but that's only during business hours, just so you know. So, you know, I, I guess, you know, we really don't have any sponsors here, but I guess Jim really takes care of us. So he is kind of a, a, a non-paid, we don't pay him, he doesn't pay us sponsors. So we really appreciate you, Jim, buddy. You're very welcome, Sean. Thank you. I we also on the show. Absolutely. Thank you for being on the panel. We also got Will Fly from willflyppg.com. What's up, bud? Hey, hey, hey. I have a feeling it... Is, uh, I mean, it's beautiful out. I have a feeling there's a lot of people flying tonight, at least here in North Carolina. It's good to be here. Yeah, I, I, I agree. That's one of the things that we're saying on the pre-show. It's like, you know what? If I didn't have this podcast, I would definitely be flying right now. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, right there with you. <laughs> yeah, but tomorrow it's going to be beautiful all day long. So as soon as I get up until I go to bed, I am going to be flying. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. So um, any new videos, anything that we need to uh, go to willflyppg.com and check out? 
Yeah, you can always go. You can even double dip if you want to, you know? Uh, I'm kicking around some ideas. Probably have another tips video coming out here before long. We'll see. Awesome. Just the tips. Good deal. Well, if you haven't been over to uh, willflyppg.com, make sure you hit subscribe, hit that bell notification. His videos are absolutely amazing. But, you know, it's not about Jim, Will, Linda, or me. It's not about us. Tonight, it's all about Jeremy. Jeremy is our guest. Uh, he's come here all the way from Michigan. Is that yes, correct? Sir. Yep, I'm in Metro Detroit. Yep. I cannot believe that you came all the way over here from Michigan tonight just to be with us. That's awesome. I had to open my computer. It was a lot of work today. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Jeremy, uh, I know that we talked a lot about a lot of things on the pre-show, but uh, welcome to the show, buddy. And um, uh, for the people that don't know you, we do have some links down below to his Instagram and a little bio. So if you want to check that out as we're talking, uh, that's really good. So Jeremy, welcome to the show, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me. I've watched your show for a while now, and I learned a lot from your show, and hopefully I can like, teach some other people some things. We'll see. I bet you can. You've been flying for three years. Um, you have uh, Adam 80. You took an SIV course this last March down in Florida. You've done all sorts of XCs. You've gone to a bunch of flyings. You've had motor outs, mistakes. Uh, you're going to talk about your training and you are a numbers guy. So you're going to be talking about numbers versus self-training tonight too. Sure. Yeah. I can talk this, about is, that. this is going to be a great podcast guys. So Jeremy, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into paramotoring. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm, I'm 27 years old. So I'm one of the youngest people I know in this sport. Uh, I found paramotoring in college on, on YouTube. You know, if you click on those recommended videos enough, you find some crazy things and, I found paramotoring one day and, you know, I watched the videos, watched the videos, watched the videos, got more and more knowledge, learned more about the sport. And then after I graduated college, I, you know, got a job and got a little bit of money. I'm like, well, I could, you know, learn from YouTube and try to fly myself off the internet. And then after a little bit more research, you learn that's probably not the best idea financially. Uh, so I found a school in St. John's, Michigan, fly my PPG. Uh, it's Justin Fox, Mike Cotter, and Bob Harris at the time. I got their shirt on. Uh, Justin's got his own school, so I got his hat on too. Uh, so I trained with those guys in May of 2019. And, you know, I've been flying ever since. I bought a Adam 80 and a Parajet Maverick. I bought a Mojo at the time and been flying as much as I can, which unfortunately Michigan isn't a lot, you know, in the wintertime. But in the summertime, you can get a lot of flying in. So how often do you fly during the summertime up in Michigan? I mean, do you, are you able to fly like uh, multiple times during the week or mostly on the weekend? Or how does that work? Yeah, I'd say it's about maybe three times a week or two times a week on average during the summertime. You know, I flew in the morning and in the evening yesterday, but for the last 10 days, it's just been windy, windy, windy. And we had storms rolling through. So you guys know this. It's just depending on the weather. But I try to fly as much as I can. So when you say you try to fly as much as you can, if you were able to fly for an entire month, you know, the wind is perfect for 30 days, how often would you go out and fly? I had six days, probably one of oh, really? five days. Yeah, I'd say. Well, that's good. Now you said that you did an SIV course in March down in Florida. Can you tell us a little bit about your SIV experience and do you have any videos with it about it? I've had all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I, I, I try to fly with a GoPro every flight. You know, I try to turn on Fly Sky High if I remember to. So I, I try to have videos every flight there, you know, sometimes there's some interesting things, but um, during my uh, uh, SIV at Skylab, I went down with Andy Fuller and Bill Dolbo. And uh, one of my buddies from Michigan, his name is Matt. He's a Coast Guard pilot. Um, he and I went down there and did Skylab together. And uh, we did, you know, three days. We did lots of toes. Uh, we covered all the collapses. We covered, you know, beeline stalls full stalls, we covered, you know, spirals and top landing. We did all kinds of stuff. And Andy's very enthusiastic, but man, sometimes it, it's, it's pretty exhausting doing a lot of those things. It's very high emotions, very high adrenaline. Um, this, is, this is a clip of uh, learning spirals there. So how long were you flying before you decided to do an SIV course? So I trained in uh, May of 2019 and I took this in uh, March of 2022. So that's about three years. But I, I figured it's probably a, a good thing to do. I, I don't want to do any of this stuff ever again, maybe besides the spirals or in big years, but 
Uh, it's, I think it's good for, you know, safety purposes. If for whatever reason I need to recover from a problem, um, I think this helped me uh, get more tools in the toolbox for, for those situations. Exactly. And, and a lot of people think that, you know, you go to an SIV course to learn acro. We don't go to an SIV course to learn acro. We go to an SIV course to tell us what you learned. Yeah, I learned uh, like, you know, collapse recovery. So we did asymmetric collapses, frontal collapses. You know, we, we did some steering with the asymmetric collapse. So if your glider folds in half, how do you turn left? How do you turn right? Um, we did, you know, frontal collapses. And Andy and Bill do a good job at um, kind of like taking baby steps through it, if you could call it baby steps at an SIV. So, you know, you pull down the A's, let go. And then your next time you'll pull and hold them for a couple seconds and let go. And then you'll pull and hold them for even longer um, for a asymmetric collapse, for example. And then, you know, the progression of the collapses to beeline stalls, to full stalls, then we did negative spins. And then after you, you know, handle the full stalls and the negative spins, Andy kind of lets you tailor um, what you want to learn next. So I told him I wanted to try spirals, but this is my ozone mojo I have. And this, this glider is really hard to keep in a spiral. It's a beginner wing. It's an A wing. It, it handles collapses great. It handles spirals great. Uh, I didn't do any uh, stalls on it, but um, yeah, it's a great glider. And it's just hard to keep it in those spirals, especially when you're learning, you know, you have to like modulate the brakes and the mojo just wants to fly above your head. <laughs> and the, the mojo is an A wing, right? Yeah, it's a very beginner wing. Uh, it's so, actually the only wing I flew up until this SIV. I've only, I trained on a mojo, I bought a mojo, and I've only flown a mojo um, until this SIV. Actually, it's wrong. I, I had a Luna as well. I, I bought a Luna, but I've only flown the mojo for a while, and then I bought a Luna. And then eventually I uh, took this SIV. So um, when you learned how to recover your wing, uh, do you do you feel safer now when you fly, you know, a paired motor instead of, you know, a free flight harness like this? Uh, I think, I think, yeah, I think it, it made me feel more comfortable in the glider. You know, I've always heard, you know, the glider wants to fly, the glider wants to fly. Um, I, you know, doing SIV, you got to see that. The, the glider does want to fly. Um, if you're going to do anything goofy, you know, do it at SIV class, do it over water, do it with reserve, do it with the boat. But you know, the glider just wants to fly. I, I would say it made me a safer pilot overall, but honestly more cautious as well, because um, a lot of those things I did weren't the most pleasant feelings in the world, like full stalls. You feel like you're riding on a, a, a bull or something, you know, like a carnival or some ride, ride a Bronco around, you know, it's, it's very rowdy. <laughs> it's not something I want to do again. Um, so you'd be interested in doing another SIV and, and uh, what, do, what would you say to your friends that fly paramotors right now? Would you recommend an SIV course to them? Yeah, I, I, so I knew someone, I fly with someone, you know, we have a pretty big group down here in Metro Detroit that fly paramotors. Uh, one of my friends recommended Skylab to me. He went, he went through the, the program himself. Uh, I think it's a good, good thing to do. I think it's um, good for, you know, learning your wing. You know, you learn a lot about your glider when you're folding it up in all kinds of different ways. You know, this is uh, a full stall on the screen right now. And I have a funny caption. I told Andy, call me Joseph Stalin because I nailed these things, you know, <laughs> but you can see um, the, uh, like it's, it's, it's not a pleasant ride. It's pretty rowdy, but as you slowly bring your hands up and you find backfly, it becomes a lot more uh, tame and then hands up, catch the surge and then fly out. Um, but yeah, I recommend, you know, anyone if they're interested in, you know, learning more about your glider, learning more about safety, um, you know, incident recovery. Uh, this is a great class to do. Hey, on a scale of one to 10, how scary was that first stall? Uh, pretty much 10. I was really? very nervous for it. Yeah. I, I, I think there's a kind of a negative stigma behind full stalls. And I think um, if you don't know, you know, how to do them, they can get pretty ugly pretty quick. You can, you know, gift wrap yourself um, with your glider and, you know, that's, that's not easy to get out of. I, uh, had extensive conversations with Andy and Bill on the ground. You know, we, we rehearsed what we do. You know, Andy told us, here's how you do the maneuver. Here's how you recover from the maneuver. Here's what can go wrong with the maneuver. Here's how to get out of those situations with the maneuver. And everything Andy said was true. Everything he got spot on. So I, I was impressed with Andy. Is this his wing that you're using? Yes. Yeah, so this is uh, the one of three wings I've flown in my life. This is a... U-turn emotion. 
I think that's a G German I, wing. I flew that when I was over there too. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a low B. It's really carvy when you're a big boy like me. <laughs> yeah, I'm 185 pounds, so I don't know the size of this glider, but yeah, it flew very similar to my mojo. That is so awesome. So what's the, uh, I, I guess, of all the things that you learned at your SIV course, what is the one thing, what is the one takeaway that you're like, you know what, I'm glad I went to the SIV course because of? Yeah, so I, I fly with the reserve um, on my paramotor. I, I saw a video on YouTube of a guy, I think he's in Russia, he's flying and, you know, he catches an eagle in his glider and his lines and the eagle, you know, tangles up in his lines and makes his glider not recoverable and he ended up coming down in reserve. So that's why I fly with one, not because I'm flying in bad conditions or anything. Um, yeah, that's the reserve for right there, I think. Yeah, so um, I fly with a reserve just in case there's some sort of suicidal bird trying to get me. I know it's a very, very, very small chance, but it was enough to make me make me buy one and fly with one. I, I think you can mitigate a lot of it just by uh, your decision making. But I'm glad I took an SIV because I got to throw a reserve. It was an intentional planned reserve throw. And you come down pretty hard on the reserve. And that's something I never knew. You know, I, I didn't know how soft the landing would be. I know it's a lot better than the alternative um, result if you don't throw a reserve, but it's it's not something to do lightly. You know, a reserve for me, in my experience, is uh, you come down pretty quick. <laughs> so, you know, you grab the handle, you kind of toss it like a purse, and then uh, your next problem is to get rid of the glider kind of tangle the like bring the glider in so you, you can see me going hand over hand wrangling in the brakes just trying to get the glider in front of me so i can disable it from uh pulling um the glider in a different direction and yeah, i would that... say that it, in addition to this landing in the water is not a pleasant experience either you know i, I fly with, over water a lot i do have uh power floats um but this day was a little windy so the reserve uh was pulling me as soon as I hit the water. So I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, trying to keep my head over the water and Andy zipped over pretty quickly, but um, with gloves on, it's, it's pretty hard to find your uh, clips on your harness to undo them. So, you know, if this was in a controlled scenario, I don't, I don't know, you know, how pleasant this would be. <laughs> I don't fly with gloves very often, but you know, it's very hard to find uh, the clips with gloves on. Well, that's really good. I'm glad that you're able to, uh, to, to throw a reserve because a lot of people just don't know what it feels like to throw a reserve unless you do go to an SIV course. Um, but uh, what kind, oh, so you're doing a horseshoe. Horseshoe, yeah, this is kind of funny. I'm like, what is going on? I've never seen a horseshoe before. I watched a lot of videos on the internet on Skylab before you know, I signed up. And uh, this is my first time seeing a horseshoe. So that was a very weird thing to do to a glider, but it's pretty tame. You just pull in the inner rays and it folds in on itself. So really interesting, just to let you know, um, I have a Roadster 3 and I went to there, I went there with the Roadster 3 to see what it feels like. And then I took the Gin Vantage for next uh, uh, SIV course there to see how it, um, see what it does. And it behaved completely different. I tried to do the horseshoe, it collapsed, uh, spun, and uh, yeah, it, it was awful. It was a 28 meter. I mean, I, I all my, all my um, uh, gliders are 28 meters, but they all do different things under different situations. So I really think that doing an SIV course with your different wings are really important just because, you know, in a certain situation, you don't know what's going on. I mean, you don't know how to recover. Yeah, I would like to take one with my Luna. I know the Luna is a little bit of a spicy glider and I, I thought it was kind of a big jump from a mojo in terms of glider progression. Um, but, you know, I, I have a lot of friends that fly them. Um, you know, I, I've seen them fly a lot. I know it's kind of a high B. Um, I know it's not really rated. I don't think it's rated, but it's a high B in my opinion. Um, but I'd like to take it through an SIV to see how it reacts. I know people who have done it and, you know, they say they can do pull-ups on the A's because it's that collapse resistance. So I want to see if that's true, but I, I'm in no rush to do an SIV with the, with the Luna, but I would say it's something I want to do eventually. It really is amazing. I was I was doing the same thing, like like you just said. I felt like I was doing pull ups, and I, I my my chest was cramping, my arms was cramping, everything was cramping. I see thirty eight degrees Fahrenheit. I think there's a um, a question in the chat about temperature. Can Will or Jim find well, that? Uh, actually, all the fly swapper was he was asking what's the temperature cutoff for your fly, 
And that's, I was thinking the same thing, man. If you were wearing gloves, I'm thinking, man, that water had to be cold. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was in Florida. So the, the weather is a, water's a little warmer in Florida. Oh, okay. 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 I, I was more worried about the alligators than the weather when I was down there. I, I kept telling Andy, you know, I'm, I don't want to throw a reserve and land in the, the chompers of an alligator. So <laughs> I was worried about that, but you know, we didn't have any problems with the alligators there. Now, uh, this video is kind of a compilation of uh, videos I've made in 2021. It's kind of cool. Yeah, you're laughing about that, but that is one of the main reasons I don't want to go down to Florida to take an SIV. <laughs> yeah, oh, really? Kidding really? Not. All kidding really? Not. Yeah, I just there's yeah. something about landing in fresh water in Florida. You know? But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Sean, do you mind if I take the screen share for a second, if I can figure yeah. out how to do it? Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> one, one of the days we were down um, at the SIV, we – we're at this LZ, so you have to you have to you know take the boat. You know, depending on the wind direction, there's a different um, LZ that you know you launch from. And this day, we had a surprise on the LZ. So I'm going to screen share and see if I can make oh. this bigger. So that that's Andy? Andy, that's Andy's dog and a dead alligator at our LZ. Wow. I'm not sure if this is YouTube friendly, but <laughs> you can see it's missing two of its legs. So this was not a pleasant experience to see. <laughs> Uh, when I'm about to throw a reserve into the same water. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, wow. Um, you know, I'm from Michigan. I don't know a whole lot about uh, alligators and, you know, their, their, their hobbies and what they do in the water. But uh, if you land in the middle of the lake, it sounds like there's not a lot of alligators around there. So yeah. I know yeah. they respond to thrashing, like things thrashing. I was water, thrashing you know? quite so a bit in the water. Air motor is thrashing. <laughs> well, that would count. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop the screen share, but yeah. That wasn't a pleasant sight. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, any other, anything else that we want to talk about the SIV before we move on to anything else? Uh, I'll, I'll say one more thing about that. And, and this wasn't until Bad Apples, just this recent Bad Apples, where I sat in on uh, uh, Andy Fuller's, um, you know, his uh, SIV clinic. I just assume that when someone, we talk about SIVs all the time, you know, have you gone to an SIV? Have you gone to an SIV? But I always figured that an SIV was something you went to and you went up and you saw the wing and learned how to recover it. And that's kind of what I pictured an SIV as being, you know, um, but it wasn't until the, the bad apples where Andy was explaining that, no, it's kind of like a progression, you know, you, there's stages to an SIV. You don't, they don't just, you know, throw it all at you at once. So um, that made it a whole lot more uh, interesting to me, more palatable for sure. Yeah, and and the thing is too, is you go there and you do what you want to do. You know, it's like you tell Andy, it's like you know, I want to just learn big ears. And when I was down there, we had one guy that that's all he did for the entire day was to learn big ears. You know, so I mean, you don't have to go there and throw down and do barrel rolls. You know, you go there to figure out. You know, it's like collapses. You know, and the collapses that you want to do. So it's all very uh tailored to you personally you know how many hours of a i mean what kind of hours uh, are you as far as a pilot you know do you have 100 hours are you pretty new and he'll tailor it to you and your experiences so um i found it very very fun entertaining and uh amazing uh, do we have any other questions in the chat did you use your wing during the art with the siv at all yeah, so I have, I have two wings. Uh, I have the Ozone Mojo and a BGD uh, Luna. Um, for the SIV, I only used the Mojo. And I also used one of Andy's gliders, his uh, U-turn emotion for uh, the full stalls. I wanted to use his glider for the full stalls. Um, so we just used those two gliders. I tried one of his other gliders, but I had a mishap inflating it and went, you know, 10 feet into the lake. <laughs> so I decided against using that glider again. That was just my bad. I didn't know how to uh, inflate it, but yeah. Yeah. Wet, wet wings are really hard to inflate and get up there. What clients have you been to? Yeah, so I, I, I've been sticking around Michigan. Uh, I've only I've been flying for three years, but I've only been to four flying. Uh, I went to um, the Fly My PPG flying. They do a little flying uh, in Western Michigan. Uh, a lot of the students from that school show up. I went to that one twice. Um, it's on a little RC field and surrounded by farmland, so it's a great place to be. Um, I went to Northport last year. Um, you know, in, in Michigan, we use our hand as a map, so um, it's up in the Traverse City area. This is Michigan. 
Lindy's also from Michigan, so she's doing the same thing. But um, yeah. I, did, I did Northport up there, which is beautiful. It's right by a state park. It's a beautiful sandy beach. You know, the airport is a um, beautiful airport. And it's, it's pretty um, rural, so there's not a lot of uh, civilization nearby. So you get a lot of, you know, places you can fly. Uh, it's right on Lake Michigan. So you get a little bit of altitude and you can go to the beach and just fly a sandy beach for you know, dozens of miles. So I did that one last year. I'm planning on going again this year. I think it's in August. And I went to Torchport a few weeks ago. Um, and that's in a similar area. It's in Northwest Michigan. And that was great. Uh, I got to see Lindy do a tandem. And, you know, for those of you who weren't there, uh, you, you'll you hear Lindy before you see her. You know, you'll, you'll hear someone above you going, woo! the whole time and I'm like what who is that you know I, I do that I do that too in the sky but um sure enough it was Lindy doing a tandem and that was a it was great to see yeah you heard me yell I did it I did it I was like a little kid up there yeah okay. I know that fly swamper asked you know what is the temperature cutoff for flying I don't remember did you actually say that no what? sorry I didn't answer that question okay. um so I'm in Michigan you know it gets up to like 100 degrees um typically in the summer is pretty much the high and in the winter sometimes it goes down to like negative 40 degrees if it's a freak winter storm so there's quite a huge temperature range here um i i, I try to fly you know 40 45 degrees and up um, in my experience if i fly any colder um, it's just not a pleasant experience you know i get the the bug to go fly if it's been you know months and months since i've flown last so i'll try to go fly but uh, my winter flights are typically not very long um, I, I do have an extensive background snowboarding, so I have all the warm weather gear and gloves and all that stuff, but, uh, I just, I don't know, I, I get cold up there cause you know, it's below freezing. Uh, it's, it's very cold and you're not really in close, you're just out in the open and you have, you know, 30 miles an hour wind going by you constantly. You get pretty cold pretty quick, but I know a handful of people that uh, fly in the winter and they, they enjoy it. It's beautiful seeing the snow. That's for sure. And there's a lot less rotor because the trees don't have any leaves. So that's a, that's a perk of it too. What's the coldest that you actually flown then? Uh, probably like mid thirties, I think. Okay. So you did try it and you're like, no, that's just too cold. And 45 is your, your, your cutoff then probably. Yeah. I did it enough to know I don't want to try it too much ever again. You know, some of my friends are like, come on, let's go flying. And, I just say no until it warms up a little bit. You know, I, every every uh, winter I try to make a trip down to Florida. So this year um, I, went, I did, you know, Skylab down in Lake Wales. I um, went to Aviator and got to see some of the Aviator guys I've uh, talked to on social media. And then I went down to Wachula to um, visit my instructors at the, um, they, they do a class with one of adventures down there. So it's always nice to see those guys and get a couple of flights in down there. I think this is in Florida. How many pictures do you have of your feet when flying? Matter of fact, um, uh, everybody in the super chat, how many pictures do you think? I know it's hard to actually tell. How many pictures of your feet do you have of flying? Uh, post that number in the super chat, and I'm going to ask Jeremy, what do, you, what do you think? How many feet pictures do you have of flying? I have quite a bit. I don't know the number, but you know, usually every flight I try to take one, so I'd say maybe 100 of them. Um, unfortunately, no one wants to buy pictures of my feet on the internet, so <laughs> <laughs> there's not a market for that. <laughs> but uh, uh, I try to take one every flight. So that is so awesome. Yeah, I, I think that's the uh, that's the picture that most people take is the pictures of their feet when flying. Lindy, did you get one of your feet when flying your tandem? No, I wish, but they, I I didn't take my phone up with me. You know, because the first time flying up there, I really didn't know what to expect. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't bring a phone up there. Um, maybe next time, but knowing me, I would probably get so excited with that, I would drop it, and that would be good. So Yeah, hey, Lindy, just on um, that note, um, if you guys can see behind my phone, I had this little, like, ring loop. So oh, yeah. when, I'm, when I'm flying, I shove my finger in here and it's, it doesn't go anywhere. It, it doesn't leave this oh, ring until it's back in my pocket. So do it's you a great thing to have. It, so you fly with that in your hand all the time? I mean, you have your throttle in one hand and your phone in the other. Is that what you do? 
No. So the Parajet Maverick oh. has a pocket on one side. So I put it in the pocket, but uh, oh. I, I, you know, squeeze the throttle. I move the throttle in my right hand and the pockets on the left side. I'll take it out and take pictures of whatever I want. And then uh, it's just nice to, you know, have something to prevent it coming out of your hand. You know, I see some people on YouTube that just hold it like this. And that, yeah. if, you, yeah. if you drop your phone, it's gone. You're not finding yeah. it. You know, I've tried to find things I've dropped before and, and they're gone. <laughs> you can't find them. That's what air tags are for. Air I tag have an air tag in my paramotor, yes, but uh, I don't have it on my phone, no. Yeah, I... oh, well, that's a good idea. Yeah, and you don't even, it's not that you, it's not just dropping it, you know, while you're flying. I mean, you could drop stuff in grass while you're setting up. <laughs> yeah. It's impossible to find stuff. I've uh, heard of that, too. A lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that happening as you're getting ready to get up in the air. Oh, my hey, gosh, where's my phone? There was a video playing a few moments ago, and it showed you flying around the balloon. Now, that's something that I haven't had the privilege to do yet, but how was that? Yeah, so um, I, you know, I'm in Metro Detroit. It's a pretty populated area. Um, there's a handful of people with balloons. I, I've flown around balloons a handful of times. Um, in this specific video, this guy didn't really care to see me. He was on the phone with somebody. But there's been other times where... Um, you know, people are doing tours on balloons and they're paying money to ride in a balloon with someone. And those people are just ecstatic to see it. They think it's the coolest thing because they're way up there that I'm way up there. But uh, I think it's important to note that, you know, you're flying a, essentially a lawnmower and, you know, they don't want to hear that while they're enjoying their peaceful balloon ride. So I just try to do a pass and wave and leave them alone. I think this video on screen right now is um, the people that was really happy to see me. And um, also note, when you're flying around balloons, don't fly over them. You know, they're hot air balloons. There's a hole in the top and there's hot air coming out the top. So that's not a good thing to fly over. Uh, fly, like you can that, fly around they, them. Not only that, but you, they can uh, uh, jet up really super quick, faster than you could get out of the way. So, yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned that. So if you guys do see hot air balloons while you're flying and you want to go fly, don't fly over them. Uh, <laughs> they, could, they could come up 100 feet and just smack you. They it's incredible how fast they can um, gain altitude once they put on that burner. Yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, per, uh, balloon pilots said the same thing. He said, you can come as close as you want. Just don't fly directly over or directly under us. Yeah. I know in this picture, um, all the civilizations in front of me, there's, there's not a congested area below me. So if anyone's looking at that, don't fly over people or buildings. Don't do that. But you can fly next to it. <laughs> That's one good thing that we got. We can fly next to things. Mm -hmm. Walmarts, you know, you can fly next to a Walmart and uh, you can land right next to Walmart, go in there and get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich like Anthony Vela did. Yeah, I saw that video. It's messy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, I, I guess tell us about your, your cross countries. You do some small cross countries. You said something about uh, um, islands that you hop to. Uh, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't uh, landed on the island, but, you know, I've flown and landed and gotten ice cream before and took off. Um, I've flown from, you know, an airport to an island and flew around the island and then came back. Um, our airport, uh, we normally fly out of my little group, um, has quite a few people um, that fly there. And um, we're able to do a pretty big loop around it. And that's always a fun little XC flight. But um, nothing too far. I'd like to do that in the future. You know, one of my instructors, Mike Cotter, is a big cross-country guy. And, you know, he, he does a handful every year, I think. And I'm going to try to tag along for one of them. So what kind of uh, flying do you like to do? Are, are you low and slow? Are you um, up high and check out everything? Um, from what it looks like on your on the stuff that you post, do you like low and slow? And uh, I like to actually be up high and look at stuff. You know, it's it's pretty cool um, flying up high. You know, I used to, you know, live in um, south of Chicago, and I met a group of guys over there, and it's cool to um, get some altitude, and, you know, you can look at the skyline from pretty far away. You can see it. You know, I can see the Detroit skyline on a pretty clear day. Uh, I used to live in Cleveland, so I could see the Cleveland skyline when I flew in Ohio. Um, but um, I say typically I like to go up high and just kind of look around, enjoy the scenery. Um, I do try to dabble in flying low and, you know, around trees and stuff like that. But um, I'm trying to, you know, typically up high. 
All right. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of cross country fly up high type of thing too. Um, I've been looking and you have lots of feet pictures. I think you might have more than a hundred feet pictures like you thought. So is this yeah, the island Nike. that you're talking about out here? I'm trying to get a Nike sponsorship. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, this is an island. So it's funny that um, little uh, river on the left side, um, the right island is the United States. The left island is Canada. So um, you can't use that as an out. You know, if you if you had a motor out here, I can't go to that uh, island on the left because it's a different country. Um, but yeah, if you if you flip around the couple posts around this post, you can see um, different pictures of the island. Um, it's you know the north end of Lake Saint Clair. There's not a lot of good uh, LZs there. Um, this is actually a different island. So uh, yeah, it's this is uh, near Detroit. It is funny on 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 the section. So cool. sec oh my the section the sectional chart is just this island. You can't go anywhere besides this island. So is that it's a Belle very Isle or something. Is that Belle Isle? Uh, yeah, that is. Yeah. So, do I know? Am I like a Detroit girl? Yeah. You are a Detroit girl. Yep. That's, yeah, that's it. They, oh, so they wouldn't let you fly over Belle Isle then. Yeah, you can fly over Belle Isle, but oh, yeah, can? the uh, the sectional chart, you, you can't really leave Belle Isle. You know, you have uh, oh. Canada on one side, and then you have yeah. um, the Detroit City Airport. Um, yeah. Pretty much th their airspace is Class D, I think. Or, and it, well, you don't um, want to fly over right to the Isle. Zoo. You don't want to fly over the Detroit Zoo. That wouldn't be good. I live right by the Detroit Zoo. That's pretty far away Do you? from Belle yeah. Isle. Well, yeah, but you don't want to, you know, you don't want to fly over there and land somewhere in the lion's den or something, you know. I'm more worried about the alligators and the lions. Yeah, that too. <laughs> that too. Oh my gosh. Are you, uh, Jeremy, are you going to Wisconsin? Uh, I've been to Wisconsin before. I've never I mean, are you there. going to the fly-in? I don't, I'm probably huh? not. I, uh, I typically only stick around in Michigan. Uh, there's a couple of fly-ins I wanted to go to that are just outside Michigan, but, okay. um, yeah, it's quite a hike for me and, you know, I, I've got work and stuff to, yeah. to do. Yeah, I hear you. Yes, Jane so, Eric are putting that on. Um, know, real quick, be here. before we continue, um, uh, I think there's a couple of uh, questions. Uh, Jim or Will? Yeah, you got, uh, what cameras are you using? Uh, so I use my phone quite a bit. Um, I also have a GoPro on my helmet. I've got a GoPro Hero 7 Silver, and then I bought a GoPro uh, Hero 9. I think it's black or just the 9. Um, and then I bought the wide lens for it. So that's kind of cool. Like, is he like a bigger POV, but I'm, I'm not like a photographer or anything. I just like to take videos and share them with my friends and family on Instagram. And how are, how's the reliability on, on both of those? I've noticed in the cold, they're not, they don't do very good, but, uh, other than that, besides being cold, um, they do just fine. You have to, I got a big SD card sometimes my sd card fills up I, I try to film in 1080 um but you know if you have film in a higher quality it'll fill up pretty quick my paramotor is faster <laughs> <laughs> yeah i post i post some goofy stuff you can see my my instagram handle on there you know i i think everyone is just trying to be cool on social media so i'm just trying to yeah. pretend to be cool too <laughs> that's so funny um did you want to talk about your training and how you liked it and how many flights you got in? Yeah, so I, I trained in May of 2019 at Fly My PPG. Uh, it was Mike Cotter, Justin Fox, and Bob Harris. Um, we had a class of uh, six people, so two, two students to one instructor. Um, they had a great curriculum. They follow you know, a lot of the syllabuses that some of the other big schools do. Um, they start off with like baby steps. It's kind of a good transition. So you do a lot of kiting. Um, you do ground school during the day. Um, you do towing. So I think towing is a great initial um, thing to do before you, you know, get a motor on and fly. You know, it helps you build um, skills with launching and landing without the complexity of a motor on your back. So I had, you know, a handful of toes and then um, the weather wasn't great when we were there, but we got in 10 flights. I think everyone got in all their flights in one day, and then maybe the next morning we got a lot of flights in. So um, 10 flights was pretty good. I felt like I was um, ready to, you know, fly on my own. Um, I did come back, I think, the next weekend after – or when, it, when my motor arrived, I came back, and I, you know, got a couple of flights in with my new motor. Um, I was training on a Nitro, but I ended up buying an Atom 80. 
So they helped me out with, um, you know, how to tailor my launches for a smaller motor. But I felt good there. Um, they're great, great instructors. I think if anyone's interested in, you know, learning and if you're in the Michigan area, uh, Mike Cotter, Bob Harris do a great job with flying my PPG. Um, Justin Fox has his own school, Leading Edge, and he partnered with Alexis Quintana, and they're both great instructors too. That was really awesome. Um, now, you did have some motor outs, you said in the pre-show. you want to tell us about your motor outs and your uh, mistakes? Yeah, so um, I, I've actually only had one, and it was more of an intentional motor out. So um, I was, you know, flying around, and I heard a, a loud whack, and my whole motor kind of torqued one way. So I've never experienced that before, so I wasn't sure what that was. And, you know, if something weird happens to your motor like that in the air, it's probably time to land and check it out. So I ended up killing the motor and, and landing. And sure enough, my air box fell off and uh, went through the prop. Um, the prop actually didn't take much damage at all, which I was impressed with. Um, so I, I landed in a soccer field. There's a complex of like 10 soccer fields. And I picked, you know, the chunk that had the fewest people. Um, and I landed and I looked at my motor and like, well, airbox is missing. So that's what fell off. And then all the dads swarmed over and they're like, oh, that's so cool. What is this thing called? How do you do this? I'm like, man, it's broken. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> were, you ever, were you able to find your airbox or was it just gone? It was just gone. So oh. I actually went back and looked and it, it, it came off over a forest. You know, like I said, I, I, I try to have a GoPro on over um, every flight I do. And I was able to go on Google Maps and kind of map out where I think it landed. And it, it was just in some forest and it, it's gone. So I got you. Yeah, definitely can't find anything in a forest like a air box. That's crazy. Yeah. And you, you mentioned mistakes. I can talk about some mistakes I made. You know, I, I would probably go for the whole show on this. Um, I would say that, you know, I've made a lot of the same mistakes everyone else has made. You know, when, you, when you're first learning how to fly, your, your landings um, aren't the prettiest. You have a lot of, you know, how do I time the brakes? How do I pull the brakes? You know, you come in too quickly, come in too slowly. So, you know, I've fallen on my face on landing. I've landed on my butt. I've, uh, you know, sat down too early on launch and ended up slotting my butt, you know, for 30 feet. Um, I've only damaged my propeller from the airbox falling off. Um, I actually had an aborted launch. And I made the mistake of walking backwards towards the glider while the propeller was, you know, spooling down from, um, being turned off and I got a line wrapped around it a couple times and um, that was a pain I had to replace that line um, I've, I've made a couple of bigger mistakes you know like I was telling you guys in the pre-show I, I crashed into my car once I think that's quite a good story so I could spend some time on that if you like um, I was down in Wachula and I was interested in getting another glider adding another glider to uh, my quiver. So I have the Mojo, which is a great beginner glider. I can still get a lot of use out of a Mojo. I think a lot of pilots, you know, even if they've got more years than I do, can probably still, you know, learn new things on a Mojo. But I wanted another glider. Um, for XCs, uh, you know, a Mojo is a very slow glider. Um, this this video you have right now is one of my first um, landings. So you're getting pretty much near the beginning of my Instagram account. Uh, but yeah, this is like flight three. Um, so yeah, I'm, in, I'm in, sorry, I'm in Wachula. And I'm, you know, interested in flying a new glider. I have friends that have a Luna. So I'm like, okay, I want to try out the Luna. My instructors, Mike and Justin, one had a 23 meter Luna, one had a 20 meter Luna. And I wanted to demo it that morning. So I did a little bit of kiting, you know, got a good feel for it. And it was a zero wind day. I have a Luna 23. I'm flying an Atom 80. I'm probably a little bit too big for the Atom 80. And it's a morning and the ground's all wet. So I got this wet Luna and zero mile an hour winds and I've got you know a whole gaggle of people above me going for an XC and they're just waiting for me to launch and I blow one two three launches and uh the people I, I was with are like you know if you can't launch on this one let's let's call it I'm like okay that's a good idea and they gave me some advice and I've only this is my old hedgehog so you're, you're at the end of my Instagram account <laughs> but uh I uh, was trying to launch the Luna like a mojo. So my mojo needs a lot of A's to launch. And 
I was trying to launch Luna the same way. I kept getting frontal collapses, way too much A's. So I took off for the, you know, my fourth launch, I think, and the glider's above my head. I'm checking the wing tips, looks good, inflation's good, adding throttle, running, running, running. Well, it, while that happened, I pivoted probably 20 degrees. And instead of having this nice clear area, I'm going right at my car. And I get off the ground, I pull a little right brake to avoid hitting my car, and I just turn just enough just to hit the side of it. So let me see if I can find the, the result of that. You know, a lot of mistakes were made there. You know, don't don't continue with a launch if you're not pointed in a clear area. <laughs> um, if you hit something, come in and land. I ended up going on the XC flight because so I thought it just hit the frame. But I, I checked the propeller and the tip of it just, just got damaged a little bit. But uh, let me scroll through my pictures here and see if I can find that for you guys. I felt like such an idiot, you know, learning a new glider, launching it after three or four failed attempts and no win and it's all wet. And that was not a good recipe for success there, guys. So at least it was your own car, man. Yeah, it's funny. I got in the air. Yeah. I, te I texted one of the guys. I'm like, hey, just so you know, that's my own car. <laughs> I didn't hit someone else's car. I ended up, um, so I'm still trying to find it, but I ended up uh, taking the mirror off the car and I have two prop strikes and uh, on the mirror and then one on the side of the car. And I'm almost there. There it is. So I'm going to screen share for you guys. All right. You are not a stunt flyer. So you, you can, can see. Oh, Lord. I, oh my I felt goodness. like an idiot. This is not pretty. So I'm lucky that it was just it was just the <laughs> propeller. I didn't hit this. The frame didn't hit this. It was just the prop. So you can see um, there's damage to my door here. Glad and you didn't hit that uh, glass. I actually did. If you look, there's a couple prop strikes that are fairly oh. noticeable right oh, wow. there. And I took the mirror off too. Yeah, uh, you, I, went, you went to you went on the cross country. Yeah. It, Looking back, that was a dumb decision. I should have came in and checked out the motor. But in my mind at the time, you know, I thought it was the frame that this hit. I thought I just barely, you know, hit the car with the frame. And typically with propeller damage, there's a lot of vibration. You know, it feels weird and you can hear it too. So I was like, well, I probably just hit the frame. You know, I went to idle, looked back. The propeller looked completely intact. I wish I had a picture to show you guys. But just the tips of it just had a little bit of damage. I actually still have the propeller and use it as a backup. So just some super glue, baking soda, and you can sand it down and repair it just fine. But uh, I might have been sick with worry, you know, my car uh, and be like, oh, my God. I know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know it was this bad at the time. I'm like, you know, it took me this long. I want to demo this wing. I'm up here. Let's demo this wing. <laughs> 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 yeah, I wish okay. I could find the video for you guys right now. Um, the video, it's uh, filmed by someone that was helping me out, and they uh, – we're more worried about me um, in the direction I was going than um, keeping the video on me the whole time. So you'll, you'll, you'll see it just fairly gets the end of it. And if you look closely, you can see the mirror um, flipping around in the air. So again, this is, this is a multiple failed launches. Luck Wet the A's. Wing. No Wet wings. Wing. Beautiful sunrise. Though. A little bit of left pressure there. You can see. And then I just barely hit it. Oh, so right yeah. Out there, right there. Not a pleasant thing to do. But if I can, you see it, you see it rolling around the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I barely got it. Dang. I felt so dumb. But yeah, so, um, you know, lessons learned. Don't fly into your car. Abort a launch. <laughs> don't fly into your car. <laughs> abort a launch if you're not happy with it. You know, try and, explaining uh, that to your insurance agent. I just yeah. super glued it back on. I actually put a Band-Aid on the car, so I, I, I kept it. I wanted to keep it um, damaged to remind myself of, you know, this sport. You, you know, you're, you're essentially a sack of meat flying around, and you're not the strongest thing. You're very fragile, so you want to remind yourself that, you know, mistakes happen, and you want to learn from them, so. Where were you I, trying Where were you trying to take off? I mean, you, I mean. This way, this way, <laughs> to the right of this windsock, that way. Uh, so I turned quite a bit left. It's a lot better than hitting this right here. As you can tell, this would have been miserable. But yeah, I took off and I slalomed these campers at you know wow. six or seven in the morning. Good morning, person flying right next to you. But it wasn't a pleasant thing to do. So learn from my mistakes. I, I try to learn from everyone else's mistakes. I see them on the Facebook group. I see them on YouTube. But sometimes I have to contribute to the pool of mistakes. And this is my contribution.
No, that's awesome. I'm glad that you put that on there because that's that's what the show's about, Jeremy. It's about everybody learns from everybody, you know. And I'm glad you put that out there because that happened, you know. And you didn't get hurt. Nobody got hurt. Well, your vehicle, but you know, you can replace that. But um, yeah. Play play that whole play that whole video again, please. Yeah. The funny the funny oh, thing no, is if I if I pulled left brake, I probably would have swung away from my car. <laughs> but uh, that object my fixation. Instinct, my brain said dodge when it should have said stop. Run, Forrest, run! I can't believe he didn't follow you for the takeoff. Yeah. Yeah, it's I'm okay. Okay, here we go. Well, he just did not want to video you going around all that stuff, <laughs> but it was yeah. a good sunset or sunrise. Yeah, beautiful. But yes, yeah, that's, that's one of my mistakes <laughs> I've made. I, I think it's probably the biggest mistake I've made um, in flying. You know, I try to be very aware of power lines, of decision making, of weather. You know, I, I could probably tell you a, a good a good choice I made. Um, I was flying with some friends. If, if you want to move on to something else, but uh, I was flying with some friends in Michigan and. The weather was questionable and we, we took off for a little XC flight and we, we get, you know, to this area and it's, it's pretty turbulent, pretty rowdy. And we turn around and uh, one of the guys decides to land in a school. Um, this is someone that has quite a few motor routes. So I thought it was a motor route at the time. Um, but yeah, he started packing up. I'm like, okay, he's going to stay there. And I headed back to the, uh, the airport and the weather just wasn't a good time so i fly for fun i don't fly to fly so i wasn't having fun and i didn't think getting back to the lz was a good idea so i put it down in a farm field and i ended up hitchhiking back to my car <laughs> and then i drove back to my gear so if you don't like the weather you know you're the pilot in command no one's making you fly so you can always land wherever you want so i landed in a farm field hitchhiked to my car um the guy was like are you okay like what are you doing over here what is that butt fan thing I'm like, well, weather's bad. I just wanted to land. And he drove me to my car and I drove back to my gear and no one stole it. So that's a good, good day. What's the most recent mistake or failure to maintain your motor? Uh, I would say this is also a, a dumb decision I made. But um, again, you're pilot in command and these are decisions you have to make. Um, I, I intentionally flew with a broken kill switch for a flight. Um, my kill switch on my throttle um, went bad and I was at a flying and I wanted to fly and it was beautiful. Everyone else was flying and I was confident in um, the weather at the time, in addition to my landing abilities and um, landing with the motor running. You know, I've done a lot of touch and goes, uh, the motor's running for those. So I, I took off and flew and landed and I had a buddy, uh, I fly a clutched Adam 80, so the propeller doesn't spin but I had a friend come over and pull the spark plug off. And, you know, you have to be very cognizant of not touching the throttle at all when someone's, you know, going for your spark plug. So um, that is probably a bad decision, but at the time I wanted to fly. <laughs> all right. And, and there's another question. What's the scariest situation you've ever found yourself in while paramoting? I was going to say the full stalls during Skylab, but that's paragliding. Um, I would say that this is kind of kind of lame, but one time I saw an object the same altitude as me on the horizon, not moving. And typically that means it's coming at you. Um, so that scared me quite a bit very quickly. And I got, I lost altitude, but I eventually realized it was just someone's like holiday or birthday party helium balloon floating in the sky. It was pretty close, but that scared the heck out of me. <laughs> Did you try to grab the balloon? I tried to get pretty close to it, but I was like, I said, airplane no that's not an airplane is that you know something else is it aliens uh, i was just a, a party balloon but that was a very scary experience i would have said alien and just stuck with that <laughs> <laughs> or at least stuck with the ufo thing it's like hey it's unidentified it's flying it's there i don't know uh that's pretty awesome uh do we hit all the uh, questions so far there is another question, but I think you've pretty much answered that. That was Nick Griffith asks, what's your go-to wing? It's hard. I, I have two wings, and uh, I've really only flown those two gliders. I have a Ozone Mojo and a BGD Luna, too. And just depending on the day, depending on what I'm trying to do, depending on the weather, um, yeah, if I'm trying to go up there and attempt some acrobatic stuff, you know, I'm getting into wing overs. 
Um, or as Bill Dolbo from Skylab would say, wingy dingies, because they're not real full wing overs, they're just little wing overs. Um, so if I'm doing stuff like that, I'll use the Mojo. Uh, if I want to go, you know, low and slow, the Mojo is great. Um, if I'm going on like an XC flight or flying with friends, the Luna is great because I'm typically the fastest person in the sky with the Luna 2 uh, trimmed out. So it just depends. Depends on the day. Well, what is your definition of a wing over? Um, I don't know if I have a good definition of it, but um, when you're over the wing and you're, you know, pull brakes and you go like this or go over it, I would say I'm definitely like getting the wingtips below the horizon. There's, there's a couple of videos on my Instagram of probably uh, how big I get, but um, it, it's, it's hard to learn with the Adam 80 and the climb rate for, you know, someone that's 6'1", 180 pounds on an Adam 80, it's definitely uh, not very good of a climb rate. So you don't get a lot of uh, iterations of, you know, attempting wing overs and learning wing overs. I, I think another SIV would help me get better at them. But uh, I'm okay with just the little ones I'm doing right now. I'm happy with those. Now, you know, I'm 250-ish pounds and I took an Adam 80 up. So, you know, you can't say anything about being 180 pounds and there's not enough thrust for you. I, yeah, definitely not. Depends on glider size for sure. I saw your I mean, I got today. the big old the big old wing. You got the small <laughs> wing. So I, I kind of yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah, it, it's definitely hard to launch in no wind. Um, you need to be on your, your A game. Um, if you're, you know, a new pilot watching this and – you're somewhere in between, you know, do I want an Adam 80 or do I want like a Nitro or a Moster or another motor? Uh, I would say if you're thinking about it, just get the bigger motor. Um, there's pros and cons, like the smaller motor, uh, like my Adam 80 has pretty much no vibrations, um, pretty much no torque. It's, it, it weighs lighter, but you uh, lose that in climb rate. You lose that in um, distance to launch. So you'll need to run farther. If you watch Sean's video, you'll see running quite a bit with the Adam 80. Um, and with the bigger motor, you know, you'll, you can have smaller LZs. You can pop off the ground pretty quickly. Um, you can climb a lot faster. It just depends on what you want to do in the sky, in my opinion. And Tony Marzano said, and uh, what size Mojo do you fly? Uh, it's a 24. I think it's their size small. So it's a little bit bigger than the Luna. Uh, I definitely noticed the difference in climb rate and the difference in um, LZ size. I have flown from some pretty interesting LZs that uh, I wouldn't fly the Luna in just because you need maybe a little bit uh, less runway with the uh, Mojo 24 for me. Okay. And it looks like Fly uh, Swamper also asked some uh, a question earlier about what apps, uh, sites, tools do you and your group use to communicate and do stuff like track each other in flight? I would say we don't really do a whole good job at tracking each other in flight. Uh, we have like, you know, iPhone, Android group chats together. So we, we talk to each other quite a bit. Um, yesterday, you know, in our group, we had someone with a motor out laying on a golf course. So we had to go rescue them. But, um, you know, that's just a text message away. Um, for other communications, we've used Zello before, uh, Z-E-L-L-O. It's like a walkie-talkie app. And there's like little Bluetooth buttons you can get. So if you want to talk to each other, you can put it on your brake toggle and you can push the button to talk and it'll go through your phone and you can have a little walkie talkie chat with a handful of pilots in the sky. Um, assuming you have a headset able to connect to your phone. I have a Sina 10 R, which does a great job at filtering out motor noise. Um, I also, for weather purposes, I use an app called wind compass. Um, in my area it does a pretty good job. Um, I also use Ryan Carlton quite a bit. And then, you know, I, I have a handful of other ways of looking at weather, you know, the weather app on your phone, uh, Ventusky or Ventusky. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's great. Um, yeah, I, I call it Ventusky too. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know. I <laughs> Those are all great for, you know, weather. And, um, you know, typically I like to take the average of everything. If it's looking sketchy somewhere else, but not everywhere else, I'll go to the airport and, you know, no one makes you fly. So you can always go to the airport and not fly. So, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of weather apps. Um, you know, Sky Vector is great for sectional charts. You know, we've had a couple of TFRs in the neighborhood. Uh, it's good to know that those exist. Um, I had a friend that was in Illinois who um, intentionally flew his paramotor before a TFR was effective, so he was legal. But when he came in and landed, the Secret Service were there just informing him of the TFR that he knew about. So they don't mess around with those TFRs <laughs> at all. <laughs> so be aware, be aware those exist. 
Absolutely. And one of the things I would like to say real quick, too, as far as the TFRs, I'm glad you brought it up. One of the things that I teach the students and I tell everybody, you know, th that I do, uh, and it seems to help, is uh, I go to tfr.fa.gov. It's, uh, it's, it's on my, uh, I guess, my bookmarks on my phone. And what I do is I look and then I take a screenshot. So I have a um, a time stamped thing showing that I did look for TFRs. There's nothing going on. So if one did pop up while I was up there, which would be almost nil, and I did come down, Secret Service is like, hey, there's a TFR. It's like, look, I got a screenshot. It's uh, time stamped. So I don't know if you guys do that or not, but to me, I think that that might save my butt in the future in case the TFR ever pops up when I'm in the air. Um, also, too, you said something about the uh, sky vector, I think, or something with the sectionals. Do you, you said that you use the fly sky high or the sky fly high? Yeah, I use fly sky high to uh, essentially track like you know where I was, how high I went, speed. If anyone has any problems with like me flying in a certain area, I've got a map of where I flew, so I could say, hey, I didn't fly over whatever you think I flew over. It's also kind of neat to look at, so I, I like using fly sky high. Do you use the the um, the airspace? On it I, do. I don't oh my god it's amazing you you can see all the different airspace when you get to that airspace it will warn you that there's an airspace coming up if you get to it and you're in the airspace it'll warn you it'll show you on the uh on the thing too that you need to go down 100 feet to be underneath the shelf or something i mean it's really really awesome intuitive and you can you know kind of give it a give an idea especially if you do some cross countries am i going to be going through something so it's a little bit easier than looking at sectional charts, I think. So, yeah, I'll um, have to check it out. It's it's worth the seven, eight, nine bucks or whatever um, in-app purchase. I think me so, myself, I, I love well, I got it. A, I got a question because I I've been hearing you guys talking about the cross-country flying. So, um, what? Why do they call it that? You know, what I mean, like explain like cross-country flying. So, what is considered cross-country flying? Like. Is that the lingo I need to learn? So, Jeremy, um, what is your definition of cross country? Yeah, I, I think it's um, where you fly a far distance away from your LZ. So, think of you know flying from your LZ, you know, twenty miles away, and then coming back, or maybe forty miles away, then landing, refueling, and coming back. Um, as opposed to a different type of flying where you're just kind of loitering around the same area. Maybe you're just bobbing in and out of farmland. Okay. Um, my definition of, uh, you know, cross countries is just kind of flying in one direction, looking at stuff, um, you know, oh, getting, okay. enjoying the views. Kinda, I, I, like, I like, like looking at stuff. Kind of like when you're driving and you're going the back road. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like, like going on a road trip. Think of it as like a mini road yeah. trip in the sky. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of doing your thing. Yeah. No, so a lot like, of people have different different yeah. definitions of a cross country so they have cross country and mini cross country and no land cross country so the no okay. land, no land cross country is the one that you like jeremy said you'll go out 40 miles then turn around and come back so you did a long cross country but you never landed and then you have like um, a mini cross country where you go out like you know one to 10 15 20 miles land Okay. and then take off and come back and then you have the the long cross countries where you take off go land get gas keep on going to a different destination usually it's like a one day thing then you come back the next day or something like that so there's many wow. different types of cross countries and people might say that you know their cross country is just you know um going a mile that way and then coming back so everybody has a different definition of cross country if you're in the super chat what is your definition of cross country? I'd like to, to see what other people have to say when it comes to cross country. So there's one thing that we haven't talked about yet. Your sure, job, sure. your job, you said that you're numbers guy and you said that yeah. you want to talk about numbers versus self-training and uh, what would be the optimal thing to do. So. Yeah. So I, I, I work uh, as a financial analyst for a bank. I do a lot of number stuff in my life. Um, for me personally, I'll just kind of tell you my thought process um, back when I was in college trying to figure out how do I fly these butt fans around. Um, so training has a cost. Typically, what is it, 1000 to $3,500, depending on you know where you go, how many instructors there are, if you have to bring your own gear, if they have gear for you, a lot of factors there. Um, so that cost of training 
may deter some people. You know, a lot of people can learn stuff from YouTube. I've learned how to fix my car from YouTube. I've learned how to cook food from YouTube. Why can't I learn how to fly from YouTube? You know, how hard could it be? Just go up, don't go down. <laughs> how hard is yeah. that? Um, so if you've, you know, been on any of the social media for paramotoring, you'll see a lot of accidents and, and mistakes people make. Um, propellers are not cheap. Carbon fiber propellers are not cheap. Um, so if you self-train, uh, if you try to learn from the internet, uh, it's a lot uh, more likely that you will damage propellers. Uh, you'll break propellers. You have to replace them. Um, you might, you know, damage your paraglider, your lines. Uh, that costs money. Um, probably the most expensive thing, though, is is the likely mistake you'll make of buying the wrong gear. You might buy gear that's not right for you. You know, it might be the wrong size. You might buy a glider that is not something that anyone should fly, you know. Um, you might buy a glider in the wrong size and the wrong skill level. So replacing that um, is expensive um, in addition to potential injuries that you might have. So just, just try to think of all those potential costs of all those things. You know, they're not guaranteed. Some people self-train just fine. Um, but it's, it's, in my opinion, not a good idea, um, not a good financial decision. I think getting instruction is a very good financial decision because paragliding is it's kind of like a dance. You can't really learn to dance from the internet. You have to do it. You have to be shown how to do it. You have to be, you know, practice it with someone that knows what they're doing. You know, you, you might be able to self-train with a friend that you know that does it. But again, a lot of people aren't qualified or, or cut out to be instructing other people, in, in my opinion. So um, I, I think it's just better to, you know, spend the money on the class. The gear already costs money anyway. And once you get into paramotor, you're going to spend so much money on stuff that you don't even know you need it. Like reserves are about a thousand dollars brand new. Buying a helmet and making it nice um, probably costs $300. Buying all the strobes and the floaties and the chase cams and new throttles and all that stuff, all the gas tanks, that's, that's expensive too. So um if you are in a position to financially and, and you value, you know, potentially saving money in the long run of broken equipment and wrong equipment, just take a class with somebody. You know, there's lots of instructors on USPPA.org. You can see all the instructors there. I think there's a website called Para Yelp that does a pretty good job of um, listing out instructors and their reviews. I think I reviewed my instructors on there. Um, you can always go on the Facebook group and say, hey, I live here. Where should I train at? There's a lot of stuff on YouTube. You, a lot of the wrong stuff sometimes, but there's a lot of stuff on YouTube you can uh, find for guidance for where to train. Those are my opinions. Everyone's different. You might have your own, but those are mine. Hey, and that's one of the things too, you know, it's like when you first got into this, you know, three years ago, did you think, wow, I'm going to get, you know, um, a, a second wing and I'm going to be, be able to fly two different wings? You know, I mean, that's something that most people don't think about either. Yeah. And, you know, you might not even like paragliding, to be honest. Some people will take off and they get in the sky and they don't enjoy it at all. So if you look at it that way, taking a training class is a lot cheaper than having to buy and sell used gear. <laughs> a lot of a lot of people, a lot of instructors, I know I do too. We have a, um, a free day that if you want to just come over and uh, join us, join our class just to see what it's all about. Um, that's a good way of, you know, getting into the sport, it's like, all right, so what is this all about? What does it feel like? What does it feel like to, to try to, to kite? You know, I watch, I watch YouTube videos and man, it just looks like it's so easy to, to kite a wing. And then the first time you try it, it's like, right on the leading edge. It's like, what did I do wrong? Thank you so very much for joining us. You can stay here as long as you want to. I know that you said that you probably need to drop out at uh, 8.30 my time, 9.30 your time, you got work tomorrow, but stay as long as you want to and okay, leave you. if you need to. Yeah, how'd I do, guys? Is that a good show? I, I, let me let me think. You did absolutely amazing. <laughs> it was very entertaining, and here it is, an hour and a half later. So I mean, you know, if if we do a show, an hour and a half goes by like that. It's a good show. <laughs> so what 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 app are you using to 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 get everybody up in the air in the same app or whatever? Yeah, so that's Gaggle. that's Gaggle. Um, <laughs> it's an app called Gaggle. Um, really? So. So that's what they call a group of paragliders. Gaggle. Oh, okay. Gaggle. Right. So, really? So I didn't know that they had an app. Yeah. So there's an app called Gaggle. Okay. And it, um, if I haven't said that already. And um, 
And so, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. You can um, create an account and uh, it, it's, it's kind of like a um, sky fly high kind of thing, but it's a lot, it, it's, it's a lot more put together. Yeah, I go fly. It, um, you can do a lot of the same things. You can create like roots and stuff. And um, it's a little bit easier than like fly sky high. Really? Um, wow. It records all of your stuff. Um, and uh, you can see other people around you that are flying and you can, um, you can combine flights with people. So if like Will and I were flying together, um, I can go in and like combine our flight into one like recording. Um, and um, the other cool thing is like if him and I were flying together, I can look at the app and it would, it would show me where he's at. So it's like a live feed of like <laughs> where people are. Right really now. cool. Yeah. And um, you can just like Skyfly High, you can replay it. But there's, there's a word of warning to that. If you're not, if you're sharing it, you're sharing it with the public for the most part. I mean, anyone had a gaggle account. So yes. Um, yeah. Remember that. <laughs> but it's a really cool app. So when you're flying, um, it'll pop up that you are flying in the area. Is that how that works? Yeah. Yep. That is so cool. I did not know. See, and that's that's why I think it's great to do these type of podcasts to get people together and find out things because you know I've been that's flying. Why you tech talk. I didn't know about this. This, right. is, this is awesome. That tech talk right yeah. Now. I gotta tell Robert about that one. I don't know. He might not, not even know about that. And you can record your flight. It says import. Can you import from Skyfly High? I don't think you can do that yet, but I think they're working on that. Ah, you can uh, export. What's that? You, you can export though. Is that what you can export from your Skyfly High and then import it to the? You can export from Gaggle in a GPX, but I've not been able to get it to import into like Garmin. Uh huh. Even though they say they'll take GPX files, so. Um, okay. I'm so. What do you use, that. Will? What do I use for what? For flying. What app? Who's talking? Tony. Tony, I don't know. Oh, okay. I got you. I use for the most part, I just use the Garmin watch. You know, and just double tap and it starts recording. But um, like Austin said, G Gaggle is super easy because you just start it. I mean, and then it knows when you launch, it knows when you land. Um, wow. I think you, wow. you have to hit record though don't you Austin? <laughs> yeah you, you do have to hit record but you can you can record like as you're setting up so and then it won't actually start until until you Does anybody use like, gp flyer seven. you ever heard of gp flyer no I've I've heard heard of, but i haven't used it gp flyer yeah. yeah i downloaded that and i used it a couple times but i it's I, I tend i tend to always go I tend to always go to the uh, the Skyfly High. Yeah. The gaggle does it produce the IGC files? I think what? that's one of the one of the ways you can. Uh, it records. Export. It records a lot of your flight and everything. I, I'm Is that what you're talking about? The export, Jim? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, I'm pretty sure. I know it's GPX, and then the other one, which is is a really popular one, which that would probably be the IP whatever. IGC. Yeah. So, I mean, check it out. Tomorrow night, uh, we're going to be talking about that too on tomorrow night's show. Um, anybody on the panel here have your own merch? <laughs> one, two. Besides Jeremy. Jeremy, you have some too? No, I said besides no, you, everybody else. I don't, I don't have any merch, no, but I, I don't blame you guys. You know, this is so much fun flying around in the sky and why not try to make some money out of it? You can even make it your job if you, if you work hard enough, I'm sure. Tucker oh, did. That's all he does Tucker, now. Right? Yeah, he's doing great. Yeah, a lot of instructors don't have. You have you any know, uh, desire to teach, Jeremy? I've thought about it. You know, I, I did the numbers. Looked at the numbers. Do the numbers. I, you know, I I think about it, but uh, I uh, probably should get a little bit more experience before I do it. I think, but That's it right. might be maybe a retirement job. Stop working and Definitely. do paramotor like instruction for a living. That sounds yeah, great. Only 20, 26, 27? I'm 27. Yeah, I've been flying since I was 25. And, you know, seeing people land on their first flights is 
it's it's a lot, yeah. really enjoyable like i saw lindy flying around and she was having a ball that was awesome <laughs> but i just want to say thank you very much jeremy for joining us tonight you've been an awesome guest i can't thank believe that so two much, hours almost jeremy. went by like that absolutely amazing um lots of fun stories make sure you guys go to his instagram account uh, uh the link is down below along with his bio so check that out and jeremy i had a blast man yeah thanks for having me yeah. i've enjoyed watching this show it's fun to be a part of the show and you know, keep watching. This is great. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. We're okay, it, it, anytime, Jeremy. Okay, Come it's a blast. Back, you know, on Mondays, you want to hang in the, you know, hang in the Zoom with us on the panel, whatever. Just hang with us. Absolutely. Anybody that's in our guest chat is more than welcome to jump on and be part of the panel. So, if you want to be part of the panel and you've been a past guest, join anytime. If you want to be on the panel and you haven't been a guest yet. Get up with Linda Anderson, go yep. to paramomusa.com, tell right. her that you want to be on the panel, but you're not interested in, in uh, you know, uh, doing an interview. Yep. Just like John Wayne. John Wayne loves to hang out with us, but he's right. not interested in, in being a, 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 a talkity talkity guest, which is perfectly fine. I think, I think John just looks awesome just sitting right there in the corner. There you go. He's like, for, yep. For me? It's like, yep. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, guys, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. If you want to uh, get up with me and my crazy shenanigans, you can always go to iflyparamotors.com, bpggrandpa.com. And of course, you know, you can always check us out every Monday night at clearproptv.com. That forwards over to our PPG Zone uh, page, which is really awesome. If you haven't been to PPG Zone yet, please do so. Because if you want to see who's flying around in your area, other than the gaggle that I just found out tonight, is that they have an interactive map that you can actually see pilots in your area. Get up with them and say, hey, I want to go fly. I want to fly with you. And right. it's a great way to make uh, uh, some great friends. Yeah. Don't also, to too, paraglidingtalk.com. You know, absolutely yeah. thursday nights and uh you're still doing your paramotor girl on uh wednesdays heck yeah we've got one year this week I'm and congratulations we've got an awesome Yay. guest we've got susan ray from north carolina and oh, susan, okay one wheel grandma and um yeah looking forward to it can't believe it's been a year time flies just like us and also, too, Jim is very gracious and uh, prints out stuff for us, including uh, stickers, which I need to send out some more stickers to people. Thumbs up always helps. And you can always go to iloveppg.com and uh, buy some merch. That always helps, too. And Will Fly, thank you so much for your help, too. I know that you said that you got to get out of here pretty soon. So um, if you need to get, get. But thank you so much for all your help. I wouldn't be able to do this without you and uh, all my all my people on the panel. Um, go ahead and... Uh, tell anybody that uh, you know go go to your channel. You know, here's your 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 quick plug while we're still in the air. Well, hey, real real quick though, there is still a Tuesday night um, uh, show, so uh, it's going to be with Mark McElroy, Shane Robbins, and myself. So same time, uh, just go to YouTube on Tuesday night hangouts. And okay, P P P P Shane, PPG uh, Shane. I'm not, I don't know about that, but if you go to YouTube. To search for Tuesday Night Hangouts, and uh, you'll find us. Jeremy, man, you were awesome. Thanks for coming on the show. Seriously, awesome guest. Really appreciate that. Yes, definitely. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hope to see you down in Florida again. <laughs> yeah, man. Lake Wales. Sounds good. All right, guys, we're going to cut the uh, live stream. Join us here for the after show for the next couple minutes if you want to hang out with us. And if not, we'll see you uh, tomorrow on the uh, uh, Tuesday night at Hangouts, Wednesday at Paramotor Girl, and Thursday at uh, paraglidingtalk.com. You all have a wonderful evening. And again, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight, I'm which I know that you could have went out flown, but you were here and hung out with us. So thank you. All right. You all have a good one. Peace out. Thank you for listening to the end. If you enjoyed the show, please hit the thumbs up. And if you'd like to hear more, then click the subscribe button and you'll be notified when new ones come available. Have a great evening.